Hello everyone, this is Florian and in today's video I will show you how to test code with PyTest which uses Loguru as logging library. PyTest is the most popular testing framework in the Python ecosystem and Loguru is an aspiring easy to use logging library. It is just natural to look for ways to use Loguru as logging library and test your code with PyTest. Before we have a look at how to configure Loguru and PyTest to work with each other, let us have a look at testing applications which use the built-in logging module with PyTest so that you understand the changes we are going to make. Let's start by creating the general project structure. So what we need is a source directory where we put our source files into and we have a test directory um, where our tests will be located in. And last but not least, we also need a conf test file. So conf test.py, um, where the fixture that we're going to write will be located. Um, last but not least, we also need a conf test file in the source directory. Um, conf test.py. This ensures that we don't need to write something like from source.module import function but instead we can directly write from module import function. All right, so our directory looks like this. And as I said, we start with the um, built-in logging library. So we create a new file in the source directory, which is called built-in logging.py. And we open the whole project in Visual Studio Code. All right, so built-in logging. Um, so what do we need? So I would like to have a single function, which is called func. Um, it doesn't take any parameters and doesn't return anything. So basically it returns none. Um, then we want to have a new logger. So logger equals to get logger. This is a function that we need to write in a second. And then this logger should um, create a new log message with the local level info. And the message is, this is a lock message. So that's pretty much it, what this function is going to do. And so that we see something in the terminal, um, we write something like if name equals to main. So this is the case when we run the, sc uh, the script directly from the terminal. And then the function func should be invoked. And that's pretty much it. So what's left is to write this get logger function and the logger is then provided by the built-in logging library. So first import logging, then we create a new um, function, get logger, um, and what it returns is a new logger instance, so logging.logger, and let's instantiate a new logger, logger equals to logging.getLogger, name and the lock level should be set lock level um, the lock level should be um, debugging so or debug um, so that we see all the messages that are locked um, and that it is also um, locked to the terminal so that we see the messages in the terminal um, we need a new handler um, so-called uh, stream handler so logging dot stream handler instantiate a new one and we also set the lock level for this one um, which will be debug as well um, yeah the last thing that i want to do is to also add some formatting to it so create a new formatter logging dot formatter and whoops I don't see anything and um, the formatting st string looks as follows first there's the time that is locked um, then the um, name of the um, of the logger then the level name which will be then in for our debug and last but not least the message so that's basically the formatter now we also need to specify um, the formatter for the uh, for the stream handler so sc dot set formatter um, which is formatter, not sc. 
And now what's left is uh, we need to add this handler to the logger itself, to the logger instance. So logger.add handler sc. And then return the logger. And that's pretty much it. Now we have a function get logger, which um, instantiates a new logger, logger for us and returns it. So this looks already pretty good. Head over to the terminal and run this one. So Python source build in logging. Oh, we see that there is a, an error. Oh, message is not correct. Let me check that. Oh yeah, not double E, but double S. Run it again. And now we see the log message in the terminal. And now let's write a test for it. So um, in our test directory, we create a new um, test file. Let's call this one test build in logging.py. Head over to Visual Studio Code. And open this one. And first we need to import the module that we want to test. So import build in logging. Um, again, if we wouldn't have created a conf test file instead of the source layer, we would need to write something like source dot built in logging. But um, this way we can directly um, write something like import built in logging. And the second thing that we are going to need is nothing. We don't need anything else. Write our test function. So dev test and let's call it simply logging. And now we need a built-in fixture from the PyTest library, which is called caplock. And this caplock fixture basically captures everything that is sent to the built-in logging library, so which is essentially locked and um, allows you to then investigate these log messages. So if we invoke the function func from the built-in logging module, Maybe that's not a good name to call, uh, to call it built-in logging and say then something like built-in logging library or built-in logging module. Um, anyway, let's keep it as it is. So we invoke the function func. Now we can write assert. This is a lock message. And check whether this one is inside of caplock.txt. So let's head over to the terminal and run PyTest. We see that I haven't installed PyTest. Ah, that's something important. So let's create a new virtual environment first. And activate it and then we can install python-mpip install PyTest and Loguru. All right, and if we run this test again, we see that we have a passing test because this is a log message is indeed inside of caplot.txt. So now let's see how we can do the very same thing, but instead of using the built-in logging module, use Loguru as logging library. So I already installed it. So what's left is first to create a new source file and we can basically copy paste what we've already written. So this one should be copied and let's call it Loguru logging.py and we can already remove this get logger part over here because Loguru already provides um, us with a logger instance so from Loguru import logger um, of course you could add a couple of things to um, change the way the log messages are formatted or where they are sent. But let's go with the default settings for now. So we can remove this one over here as well. And that's basically it. So from Loguru import logger and in our func function, we can simply write logger.info. This is a log message. So if we hit over to the terminal again um, and run PyTest for a second time, our first test is still passing, obviously, because we haven't changed it. But let's run um, the newly created Loguru logging module from the terminal. And as you can see, we have here a pretty printed log message created by Loguru. So let's also copy the test file that we already created. So CP test build and logging and name this one Loguru logging.py.
and open it in Visual Studio Code. And this time we don't import built-in logging, but instead Loguru logging. And the rest um, stays as it is. And one would argue, okay, Loguru is also a logging library, which means that we can use the built-in cap log fixture here as well, which then captures everything Loguru is logging and um, that our check is still valid over here. So let's head over to the terminal and check whether this is true. As you can see, we have now a passing test and a failing test. The failing test is the one with the Loguru logging library. And as you can see over here, um, there is nothing inside of caplog.txt. Um, the reason for that is that the caplog fixture uses the built-in logging library to check what was logged. However, Loguru as logging library does not depend on the built-in logging module. Instead, it implemented all of its logger and formatter and handler functionality on its own. So the solution for this is to write a fixture which overrides the built-in cap lock fixture and makes sure that locks, that Loguru locks are also sent to the built-in logging module, which then is captured by the cap lock fixture. To do so, we need to create a new fixture. So head over to our conf test file and we use the one that is in our root directory over here. So not the one in the source directory, conf test.py. And there are a couple of imports that we need to make. So first we need the built-in logging library because this is where the logs should then be sent to be captured by cap lock. Then we need to import from underscore pi test.logging the cap lock fixture. And so that we don't have a naming conflict over here. Let's rename it to cap lock. So underscore cap lock. And last but not least, we need Loguru's logger instance. And let's create a new fixture. So pytest.fixture. Def, and we name this one um, caplock as well. And it inherits its functionality from the building caplock fixture. So now we need a propagate handler. So a handler that propagates everything that is locked by Loguru to the built-in logging module. Um, and we can do so by creating a new class called propagate handler. handler. And um, the propagate handler um, inherits its functionality from the built-in logging modules handler. And we override the emit function, self comma record. And yeah, every record should be handled by a new logger instance. So first get logger and the logger is called record at name. And it should handle the record itself. All right, that's pretty much it. Um, that's our propagate handler class. Um, now let's capture the handler ID. So what we do next is um, we use Loguru's logger instance that we just imported and add a new sync to it. And the sync that we're going to add is the is an instance of the propagate handler that we just written. And we can also specify a format and let's uh, use a different format this time. So I only want to have first the message um, and followed by some extras that can be specified. Um, we are not going to specify any extras, but yeah, let's keep it here. Now I want to yield the old cap lock functionality or the old cap lock fixture so that um, our test function can normally operate with it as it is. And if the test was already run, we also run want to remove the sync again. So logger.remove handler ID. This makes sure that if the code is executed normally, so without a test environment, that the logs are not continued to be sent to the built-in logging library because this is something we only want to have in order to test our code with PyTest. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. That's our new cap lock fixture. Oh yeah, I see that I need also need to import PyTest over here. Import PyTest. 
and this looks pretty good so hit over to the terminal again and run it again as you can see now we have two passing tests i hope you liked this um quick tutorial um, let me know in the comments whether you already used um, Loguru as a logging library and which library you use for testing, whether it's PyTest or the built-in unit test module. Stay curious and keep coding.